Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about the future value of a hundred dollars invested or deposited in six different types of bank accounts, money market accounts, uh, for so we can learn how to compute both simple interest and compounded interest. And for compounded interest, I have five examples here. I have annual, semi-annual, quarterly, daily, and continuous. Okay, so we're going to work through those. And for simple interest, of course, simple interest is the most basic example to compare these against. Okay, so let's get started. Here is my interest rate. This is my annual interest rate. And here is my principal. And these two are the same for all six of these uh, deposits okay and we're gonna follow these over the course of one two three four five and then here I make a jump to ten so we see what these look like how much we'll have in our bank account at the end of for one year two year three year four year five year and even ten years because sometimes it takes ten years for you to see the big difference between compounding and simple interest okay so let's get started as you can see I've already fill this out but we can delete this and start from scratch okay so for simple interest simple interest is going to just be our principal amount times and we're locking that cell the interest rate one plus the interest rate and we'll lock the interest rate as well so that's 105 and we can also multiply if we do this formula in a smarter way we can drag it to the right so let's do C6 plus C6 times C5 which is our interest rate times the year and we just leave the year unlocked right we leave the year unlocked we lock all the other references so that when we drag this formula to the right they'll reflect the end of the year that we're talking about so at the end of the 10th year we have hundred fifty dollars in the bank account that's a hundred dollars that we deposited and five dollars for every year that it was in there so five times fifth ten is fifty at the end of two years we have ten dollars in addition to our principal of a hundred dollars right and and the four years we have twenty dollars plus our hundred initial hundred dollars so that's the easy one okay so that'll be our little benchmark to compare compounded annual now now compounded annual is going to be our principal amount lock it times in parentheses do one plus our interest rate lock our interest rate close the parentheses and we're going to raise this to the year and since this is compounded annually that means that we just leave the exponent as the end at one the time period is just one so at the end of the first year it's just going to be $105 just like simple interest but at the end of two years we're going to get interest upon the interest that we earned in the first year so you can see already that there's a difference between the amount we have in the bank at the end of the second year and this will continue to grow up to 10 years and you can see at the end of the 10th year that compounding has a big effect we have 12 almost 13 more dollars Okay? even though our interest rate and our principal was the same and this was just compounding annually okay now next example we're going to compound semi-annually so pay attention to these formulas so it's very similar to the last formula we're going to take our principal multiply it by in parentheses one plus and in another parentheses set of parentheses our interest rate divided by and since this is semi-annual we're going to do, there's 
two compoundings a year, so we're going to divide our interest rate by two. Close the parentheses, close the other parentheses, and now for our exponent, we're going to take the year we're in, the, the end of the year we're interested in, which is this is for the end of the first year, and this, actually let's start it in a parentheses, is going to be multiplied also by the number of times it's compounded in the, the period. So if a period is a year, it's compounded twice. So to recap, we divided our interest rate by two and we also multiplied our time variable by two. Time is this guy over here, right? And it's semi-annual, so we're dividing and multiplying by two. We divide by the interest rate by two and we multiply the exponent by two. Okay, and that's how this is different than annual compounding. Okay. When we go back into the annual compounding, you see that we didn't divide the interest rate by anything and we didn't multiply the exponent by anything. But you can also think of it as it's compounded once a year, so we divided the interest rate by one and we multiplied the exponent also by one. But when you multiply or divide by one, you do nothing really. So we didn't even type that, okay? Now, already you can see that semi-annual compounding gets you even more money than annual compounding. And if we were to drag this all the way to the right, something's wrong with our formula. We didn't lock our exponent. Right? We have to make sure we lock all the areas in our formulas that have these two references in them. Okay? Or else when we drag, we'll get an error like we just did. Okay? Now we can see at the end of 10 years that semi-annual compounding has even more has earned us even more than annual compounding which has earned us much more than simple interest okay so the more you compound the more times you compound in a year the more you're gonna have at the end of the year okay and the more time goes on the more the years go on the more that difference is gonna be apparent okay now our third example you'll start to catch on because by the last one you'll have seen this formula over and over. Compounded quarterly. Well, we got our principal, we lock it, times, in parentheses, one plus, and in another set of parentheses, the interest rate locked, divided by, well, there's it's compounded quarterly, so there's four compoundings a year, so we're gonna divide our interest rate by four, close parentheses, close parentheses, exponent open parentheses the year that we're interested in times 4 so you divide by 4 you divide the interest by 4 and you multiply the exponent by 4 that's how it always is going to be okay and you can see we get three more cents at the end of the first year but if we drag this out to the end of 10 years if we look in our bank account at the end of 10 years, we've got almost 50, 60 cents more than semi-annual compounding. So again, this is an increase over semi-annual because we're compounding four times as opposed to two times. Now we're gonna compound daily. So same idea, principal lock times, open parentheses, one plus, open parentheses, our interest rate locked divided by 365 days because it's being co compounded 365 times in a year and so that's divided by 365 close close raised open parentheses the year we're interested times 365 Okay, so you see this theme over and over now, where we, if we're compounding, we ask ourselves, how many times are we compounding in a year? If we're compounding once a year, then we don't do anything to our interest rate. 
or our exponent. If we're compounding twice in a year, we divide by two and we multiply by two. If we're compounding quarterly, we divide by four, we multiply by four. If we're compounding daily, there's 365 days in a year, so we divide interest rate by 365 and we multiply our exponent by 365. Okay? That's the theme. Okay? Now we can hit enter and you see we get a four more cents in that first year and let's drag this all the way to the right and at the end of 10 years you see this is more than compounding quarterly so compounding daily and compounding quarterly uh, small difference but this is only on a hundred dollars keep this in mind when you start you know your principal starts going higher into the hundreds of thousands these numbers become actually substantially different alright but you get the idea now the last thing I wanted to throw in here was compounding continuously which if you can uh, uh, conceptualize it means that at every moment this is being compounded nonstop okay so the formula for this is quite different for this we use the exponential function okay so we times our principal locked by E. In math, this is E, and this is the way you write E in Excel, EXP. And the exponent is going to be the year that we're interested in. Okay? Times the rate. And we're going to lock the rate. So again, our principal times E raised to the time period that we're interested in finding out what our balance is times the interest rate that we're getting and you see this is exactly the same it looks like as the compounded daily okay and we can drag this all the way to the right and you see it's pretty much exactly the same now this might not this might seem to you like uh, the same exact formula but you can see the difference in these if I were to for example change this to 50 years over here you would start seeing a slight difference between these two okay or if I would change this back to 10 years and change the principal to a hundred thousand dollars you can start seeing the difference even though it's small there is a difference they aren't exactly the same okay so compounded continuous and compounded daily very similar but compounded continuous is still greater gonna get you more in the end than compounded daily okay and that leads me to the next thing I was gonna show you and the last thing and that once you've created all this and your formulas are have the appropriate absolute references and relative references you can actually start playing with these inputs so we can change our rate let's say interest rate we're interested in is seven percent and everything will update and let's say your principal is some exact amount that you want to deposit five thousand and you want to know what how much money am I gonna have at the end of five years say if they sem compound semi-annually well just input what you want here and go over here to five years that's exactly how much you'll have okay if you don't touch the money of course right so you can play with those inputs another inputs you can play with are these years as you saw before I can change this 10 to 20 and everything updates over here I can change it to 30 I can change it to anything I want okay so I hope this was helpful lesson in interest simple interest versus compound interest and also we threw in continuous compounding in the end also I hope it was helpful in uh, illustrating how to do this in Excel this comes up in finance courses and accounting courses as well as some math courses so be sure to subscribe favorite like comment and share these videos with your friends till next time have a great day